people like to go on about 1984 this, Orwellian that, comparing a lot of situations to George Orwell's 1984, which, in all fairness, I have not actually read the novel, but I've read full plot synopses, I've read every article there is breaking down terminology that the novel created, like, I've basically done everything you can do except actually read it. And, you know, you can read a novel and not fully understand it and have to do additional research on it. I've basically skipped the reading it part and gone straight to the additional research part, reading all the synopses, the explanations, the terminology it's created in the real world. And I cannot, in my mind, imagine a situation more Orwellian, any closer to 1984, than what is going on right now in mainstream media. Just under 19 years ago, we're approaching the 19th anniversary, two passenger air airliners crashed into uh, one World Trade Center and two World Trade Center, and the towers came down. That much is just undisputed. Like, it doesn't matter what level of conspiracy theory you want, you're on, who you believe caused it, if you think it was George Bush, if you think it was Al-Qaeda, if you think it was, you know, George Soros, if you think it was the Rothschilds, if you think it was the Bogdanovs, um, if you think it was, you know... If you think it was a time-traveling Timothy McVeigh, doesn't matter. Even if you don't believe that the planes crashing into the towers is what actually brought them down, and you believe that was a cover for, like, planted explosives, undisputed is the fact that two passenger planes crashed into the Twin Towers, and subsequently they came down, costing human life on a level that was truly shocking and disheartening to America's core that quite literally changed the world I mean it was it was the it was the crashes heard around the world um, not only has America been very different since then but eventually other countries started catching up on like the in some cases slightly draconian but particularly in the in the years directly following the attacks, um, somewhat understandable, levels of security and control regarding travel, regarding identity, etc. I was just under five years old. I was about to, or sorry, I was five years old. I was about to turn six in less than a week. So I was five years old when 9-11 happened. So it wouldn't really be accurate or fair to say I was there for it, right? I was five years old, about going on six. I heard about what happened, and I kind of under like I understood the basics of what I was told, but like I couldn't really comprehend it. You know, I wasn't truly there for it. <clears throat> but imagine, if you will, somebody who was my age, twenty-four, uh, when nine eleven happened. So someone born on or before September 11th of 1977. If my math is correct, that would make them uh, no younger than 24 when 9-11 happened. Imagine somebody witnesses it. Someone who was really there for it. They see the attacks. Maybe it was on the news. Maybe they were in another high-rise, you know, blocks down the street. Maybe they even saw the first plane crash before the news even turned on their cameras and started pointing at it. I believe we have footage of the first crash. But imagine somebody who just witnessed the whole thing, whether through news, which at that time was fairly direct, straightforward, and nonpartisan. People just reporting on what was happening as it was happening showing the wreckage, showing the carnage, 
even I believe showing the second crash. Some stations weren't expecting it, and they just it was just on live TV. Imagine somebody witnesses 9/11 at the age of 24, and about seven or eight months later, they turn on the news. Twin Towers fall after U.S. Air Force jets fire air-to-ground missiles at the time at the towers. People talking about they can't believe the traitorous Air Force pilots who went rogue and fired missiles at the towers, bringing them down. That's what's on the news. That's what's on, you know, social media didn't exist at the time, but that's what's all over the fledg the fledgling internet. Everybody on the, you know, people on the streets are just discussing it as though that's what happened. People are like, you know, it's so horrible that those Air Force pilots betrayed their country by, you know, firing rockets at the towers and how could someone do something like that that person in that situation would be very confused to be sure um and potentially very scared because this narrative that mainstream media the internet people in their day-to-day -day lives are just going along with and perpetuating this story that is so completely contradictory to what that person witnessed firsthand. Someone who was there for 9-11, either through the news, through live video coverage of it, or in person. But let's take, let's take you know, for example, the, the, the person who watches it happen. They see the video on the news of the second crash. They later find a video circulating the internet of the first crash. They've seen the crashes on video. Passenger airlines crashing into the towers that were pristine and fine prior to the crashes. And less than a year later, they're being told by the news, by people, by the internet, that it was rogue Air Force pilots firing missiles at the towers that brought it down. That person will never believe that okay they will never ever believe that version of the story um unless they start questioning their own sanity and that's a very real possibility in that scenario somebody could very easily just start questioning their own sanity like did i really see that did I really watch that? But then they find tapes, they VCR recorded it, and they go back and they watch these same news stations showing footage of the passenger airliners crashing into the towers. It's still there. The video they found of the first crash, the, the passenger airline crash into the, into the tower. No fighter jets anywhere, no missiles being fired at it, the planes crash into the towers and the towers come down. The video of the news coverage of the passenger airline crashes is, is still there, fully accessible to the whole world. And yet they're still getting people, the mainstream news, people on the internet, people in their lives are telling them it was rogue Air Force pilots who fired missiles at the towers you're never going to convince that person that that's what happened. They're never going to believe that story. <sighs> Again, I was five when 9-11 happened, going on six years old. I wasn't there for it. But there is something I was there for. There is something that I was able to witness firsthand at the ripe old age of 24 years old. And that was Donald Trump, President Donald John Trump, elected in 2016, taking office in January 2017. President Donald John Trump, 45th President of the United States, taking action against the coronavirus in the face of... I guess reassurances, whatever the opposite of warnings are. Yeah, reassurances. Donald John Trump taking action against the coronavirus in the face 
of reassurances in the face of anti-warnings from the World Health Organization, the Department of Health, the CDC, all telling him, oh, it's no big deal, bro. It's whatever. It's whatever. I witnessed that. I witnessed that. Okay, I, as a person, as a fully grown adult, witnessed that happen. I witnessed people who, at the time, in the early months of 2020, January, early February, I remember those people who said, this is serious, it's going to blow up, it's going to be a pandemic, prepare for it, it's going to be a global epidemic, pandemic, it's going to be a global thing. I remember those people being mocked and derided as conspiracy theorists. I remember Donald Trump's attempted travel ban from China. No flights. I remember that being derided as racist and xenophobic and an overreaction by the same health officials that people quote today. The WHO, the CDC, okay, the Department of Health, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, the Beach Boys. I'm just trying to name as many bands that are somewhat, um, uh, what is the word? I'm, I literally just lost the word. Somewhat existing around the same time. Um, it's like conventional, contemporary bands that are somewhat contemporary with the who anyway, point is I was there when Donald Trump took action against the coronavirus in the face of reassurances from the who the red hot chili peppers, the department of health and the CDC, the red hot chili peppers came years later. Why do I make that connection? Oh yeah, it's because of a conversation that I had once when I was talking about being excited for the Red Hot Chili Peppers when I was a kid, and someone was like, why are you? Why do you care about the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Like, they're old now. Like, that's like me going to see The Who. So it's actually, the point of that was that The Who is way before the, the Chili Peppers. But you know, <clears throat> Donald Trump got statements from The Who, uh, Pink Floyd, the Department of Health, and the CDC, all saying, oh, it's no big deal, bro. And then when he started taking actions in the face of these reassurances, he was labeled as a racist and a follower of conspiracy theories regarding the virus. I witnessed that. I saw it. I heard it. It's there. And the best part is, you can go back and watch it happen again. You can go back and relive that history if you want. You can go back and see the videos of Donald Trump... Uh, talking about how the virus was going to be a problem. You can go back and watch the videos of Joe Biden condemning his travel ban as racist. You can go back and watch Nancy Pelosi talk about how Chinatown was so safe. You can go back and and, and read uh, articles that were published by the CDC and the WHO and you know all those other bans uh, from the uh, middle of the last century. And you can see these statements that they released saying it's no big deal bruh no big deal bruh you can do this it's still there it's all still there and yet here we are early september 2020 less than a year later okay we're talking about like eight to nine months later and people tell me that Donald Trump ignored the warnings of health experts, downplayed the virus, and took inaction. How does anyone think I'm going to believe this? It doesn't make any sense to me. During the Republican National Convention, CNN pulled in a facts first fact checker saying facts first colon 
Trump downplayed the virus in the early months of the pandemic and ignored health warnings from experts. Not only... Oh, and, and also Twitter is all over this same idea. I see this everywhere, too. It's, it's insane. It's not just one group of people. It's all the mainstream media. It's, it's political Twitter. It's my freaking meme apps on my phone. In the in the in the in the in the in the memes and the comment sections, people s s spreading this story that Donald Trump ignored the warnings, and I'm like, guys, I was there for this. It was less than a year ago. Okay, I wasn't born yesterday. Like quite literally yesterday. Okay, I'm not I'm not six months old or younger. I was there for this, and even if I was, I wasn't five years old when this happened like I was with 9-11. I wasn't, you know, approaching six years old in early 2020, like I was during 9-11. So how is it that people expect me to believe literally the opposite of what I witnessed firsthand and can go back to verify via video and articles? makes no sense to me no sense whatsoever and to see one of the largest news organizations in the world possibly the largest news organization in the world at this point put up a banner a little a little a little uh, little uh, graphic that says facts first followed by a complete and utter lie that directly contradicts what I witnessed as an adult less than a year ago it's not only angering to me as just a direct insult to my intelligence, it's also scary. It's scary to see how widespread this story has become. <sighs> because for all the talk about 1984 this and Orwellian that, I can't think of a more directly Orwellian thing than to take recent history from less than a year ago and revise it to be the opposite of what it of what it actually was and to force a narrative on people that directly contradicts what they witnessed and and try to strong arm and shame and control them into believing it into believing something other than themselves right that's what that's what Ing Sok does in 1984. That's what the party does. The Ministry of Truth constantly rewrites events so that nothing in the past is ever true. Nothing in the future can be inferred. There's only the eternal present. That's what the party does. And if you go against that, if you go against what the party currently says happened in the past, because, like, they'll, again, Ink Soak in 1984 will take events that happened, you know, a couple weeks ago and revise them. And you have to believe the new version. Even if you, as a fully cognizant adult, witnessed the exact opposite happening very recently, you are told something different and you are told you must believe it. That is what is happening right now. <sighs> CNN, MSNBC, the usual suspects, mainstream media as a whole, Twitter, memes, information, technology, social media, comments, society at large. The party is telling us Donald Trump ignored warnings and was inactive regarding the virus. And if you, like me, were there and witnessed the exact opposite, whew, 
doesn't matter. Because if CNN and Twitter and your funny picture apps, if the, that, that's, that's the ministry of truth. And whatever the ministry, whatever the ministry of truth says, that's, that's what you must believe. If the ministry of truth tells you one thing and you witness the opposite, doesn't matter. What the ministry of truth says goes. This is North Sea Hero signing out.